good. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Pull Up Experience. We're back again, y'all. What's up? What's up? Episode 47. We don't have, you know, our fallen soldier, Marquita, here with us tonight. She can break Charles out here. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> right. that. Well, like, that's all his <laughs> surgery yes. and a speedy recovery. Yes, 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 sure. yes, yes, yes. So y'all pray for our our, uh, our Marquita, you know what I'm saying? But tonight, y'all. <laughs> but tonight, y'all, we have. Jacob State Farm, don't Oh, here you go. Thank you, thank God. We have. Miss Ariana Smith tonight, guys, hey. aka Coach Ari. And she's gonna hit y'all with so many gems about just the fundamental things that you need, why you're the mentor, why they're, they're great to not only your business, but to your organization as a whole, how curriculums are important to whatever you're trying to put on, and just so many other things that you guys can implore in your nonprofit and for profit businesses, okay? Yeah. So without further ado, introduce yourself to, the, to our great audience. Hey, um, so yes, like Brandon said, my name is Ariana or Coach Ari. Um, usually I use that the name for like my youth programs and things like that when I'm teaching. Um, but I have a nonprofit called Motivate. So it stands for mentoring others through inspiration, validation, action, teaching, and empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been in existence now for three years officially. Um, but I'll say this past year is really when I've been moving like in like my youth programming space a lot more um and getting different contracts outside of what i've been doing um for the last like 10 years working with kids so nice yeah okay. so let's go let's start at the beginning so what okay. so were you in were you one of those kids who were the other kids in the classes or are we the hall monitor where, what, what, wow. where, 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 where did it all start <laughs> interesting Where so i was a peer mediator you're a peer mediator okay let's okay. get that straight that makes sense. i was a peer mediator um but i was also that kid that was in future teachers of america so like we used to go to like the elementary school kindergarten classrooms like read books to kids mm -hmm. and i loved okay. to read when i was younger so that was my thing and then at shaker we had an organization called score so a student group on race relations so as the acronyms though i don't lie it is <laughs> s-g-o-r-r um, so basically it was a group that helped to bring awareness to like racism and prejudice and discrimination mm -hmm. and so as a score leader in high school I would have like weekly meetings with like a core group of kids we would do different activities um, and then four times out the year we would go to middle school classrooms and then like teach these same activities to kids to kind of get them aware mm -hmm. of certain things because what we realized was that when kids get to middle school that's when you start to see that divide of mm -hmm. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Mm. When in all through elementary school, it usually looks like a mixed group yes. of things. Exactly. So kind of addressing those conversations um, or issues so that when they get to high school, they can be more aware and more intentional advocates for change and stuff like that. So, okay. Yeah. So what does your program entail? Are you in the schools already? Um, and do you offer things after school, like um, yeah. after school programs? Yeah, so before even launching Motivate, um, I've worked with a program at St. Angels High School for the last, now going on eight years. So they have a Reaching Minus program. Um, it's fifth through eighth grade boys from the greater Cleveland area to help to prepare them to test into like Ignatius or university schools or private high schools in the greater Cleveland area overall. Um, so I work with the sixth grade boys. Um, I used to teach language arts, but now I teach entrepreneurship and leadership development to the That's kids. Wonderful. So I have them during the summer and then they do an asynchronous, asynchronous weeks on Saturdays during the school year. Um, so I did that piece. And then for Motivate in particular, I actually have a contract at Barack Obama Elementary School in Maple Heights. Nice. So that's an after school program. Um, so we do entrepreneurship and leadership development, but a big piece of that is also more so teaching them the mindset aspect of being an entrepreneur because let's be realistic, every single kid is gonna go and start a business and that's okay. But if I can teach you some of those fundamentals, you can apply that in school, yep, or in like life outside of that, between public speaking or creativity mm -hmm. or just understanding grit, like all those things can be applicable to anything that you choose to do, That's regardless if you start a business or not. Right. So. so how do the children actually come to you? Are they recommended by the teachers or do they sign up themselves or how does that go? Yeah, so, so far, um, the programs that I've taught the kids are automatically assigned to me. So they haven't necessarily chosen to do the entrepreneurship path per se. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to be actually doing a program this summer in conjunction with University Schools REACH program. So they're very similar to the Reaching Modest program where they work with middle school boys um, to kind of help to prepare or excel them academically. 
Um, but these boys will be choosing my class as an elective, essentially. Nice. Mm. Nice. So about, about 20 to 30 boys I'll have for the summer, too. Yeah. So it's safe to say you like children. Oh. I, do. <laughs> I do. I love working with kids. Um, I have all the patience in the world for kids, not as much patience for adults. <laughs> I that know. makes sense. I'm just gonna be honest. That makes sense. There's, there's, the, they have a reason. It right. And in my head, like when there are certain things that, like my students, I primarily work with boys, but when like my boys are doing something that adults can't even comprehend, I have a hard time understanding why. Right. I'm like my sixth graders are doing this, so I expect better. Mm. I get why. it. I get it. <laughs> I really do. So let me ask you this: So it sounds like you, you. you like you said, you teach on the mindset of the entrepreneurship. Where did that begin for you? Because you just didn't jump into it, you know? So where did it begin for that? Yeah, so I was 12. Um, so when I was 12 years old, my mom found some flyer for a course being offered at Tri-C through a program called E-City. So it was entrepreneurship, connecting, inspiring, mm -hmm. teaching youth. And their whole Acronyms. premise, I know, right? It, is, it literally is a whole lot of acronyms now that I'm thinking about that. But, <laughs> Um, their whole premise was working with students from the inner city or from the greater Cleveland area overall to mm -hmm. essentially instill in them the same principles of entrepreneurship and how to start a business. So in the biz camp, you had to like take these classes, which I remember like were super boring in this like really small classroom at Tri-C, <laughs> which was freezing and I was cold at the time. But um, remember that though. I remember that because I hate <laughs> being That's cold. I hate being cold. But I was the youngest person to actually do the biz camp that summer. We mm -hmm. were supposed to be 13 but I was gonna be turning 13 my freshman year of high school. So they gave me a pass to do it, um, and you do a competition. So I won the competition there. Nice, yeah. nice. Applied for, it was like an advanced biz camp they had maybe about two weeks after the first one ended. Um, that initially was for like the older students, but they said, hey, you won this one, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you can participate. Well, qualified and won for that one. Why and they sent go? me to New York. So they partnered with oh. an organization called Nifty, um, which is huge in terms of like entrepreneurship education and providing opportunities for students to participate in pitch challenges and mm. um, national competitions and things like that. So I went to New York, competed there, and just had the opportunity to meet so many incredible people on that end. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, for me that's where it started. So when I think about my love for working with kids mm -hmm. and then me starting with entrepreneurship at 12, like it just, it made sense. I've never been one to want to teach in a traditional classroom though. Like, mm -hmm. kudos to teachers, I can deal with kids Monday <laughs> through Friday, have to deal with like state standards, um, district standards, parents, and all of that. Yeah, kudos, but I just, I don't like that because I don't want to ever have to feel obligated to teach to a test. Mm -hmm. Like, one of the things that I love with my program with my kids is wherever the conversation goes in terms of what they bring up for things, we can take it and run with it, and then it becomes a teachable moment. Yeah. So. I like that flexibility piece. Yeah. Nice. So I know you have Motivate. Tell us yes. about your other venture. <laughs> so I just recently launched um, my LLC for a consulting company uh, called Monet Enterprises. So what I, Monet Enterprises. Gotcha. So I am a very like logistical person. Mm -hmm. um, the planner <laughs> in me, like I'm gonna think through every little detail for an event, for a program from what you need to initially get things started with the registration piece to what is the training gonna look like for the people that are teaching and working with the kids to, okay, you wanna have a wrap up event? When are you gonna start advertising for this? Are you gonna communicate this with parents? How are the kids gonna be involved? Do you prepare them for that piece of things? Mm -hmm. um, but I realized with my experience with a lot of different organizations, a lot of people miss those key elements that the, really make the an small event. Detail. Yeah, the small <laughs> details that really become the Neither big details. <laughs> I mean, just let me know. I got you. Um, but yeah, so what I realized, especially in the realm of youth programs, what I realized overall, like I'm just very good at organizing those things. So think about it in one end, kind of like being an event planner, but also being more intentional when you have a youth program and maybe you're not seeing the impact that you want to see with the kids. Mm. So having me come in, like what does your curriculum look like? How are your teachers actually implementing this stuff for your programs to the kids? Because a lot of people can be teachers, but are you an impactful teacher? Mm -hmm. Like and one of my a huge difference. it does. And if you're not able to authentically connect with the kids, that then also makes a huge difference. Right. Because kids see through the fakeness. Like they do. They do. <laughs> and I have a mindset with my students, like if I'm bored teaching it to you, then I know you're bored learning. Ooh, that's good right there. That's a bomb drop right there. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I we I'm pretty sure we all can think of that teacher that like really changed our 
gave us a whole shift of mindset. It's black. Exactly, right? <laughs> you got the name yeah. right. You got the yeah. name right, right, right. For yeah. me, it's Scott. Shout out to Scott. You she know what I'm saying? Was, <laughs> <laughs> she definitely, you know, I, I, I look, just looked at her as a mom and she did mm. make teaching fun and I wanted to I wanted mm. to impress her. I wanted to do well yeah. because well. of her, you know? Yep. So, and it makes yeah. a difference. Definitely. It makes a difference. Okay. Well, listen. So you spoke about pitching. Um, Marquita not here right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, buddy. I got it from your friend. No, seriously. Um, explain to... I, I, I didn't know that there are, are pitching... Um, competitions in Cleveland for mm -hmm. businesses. I had no idea to this this past year. Um, I found out you know you can pitch your business and possibly get um, a grant for your business mm -hmm. to either start it up or um, grow your business or just yeah. funds for um, supplies or whatever you need, equipment or whatever you need. And I had no idea that we have that here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tell us a little bit about pitching and if you know of any programs that any of the businesses can participate in. Oh, 